Aloha everyone and welcome back to Act 3 from Day 2 of the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Competitions live here in the beautiful island of the Bahamas. We have some fantastic performances on tap for Act 3. I have uh, the beautiful Jesse Liu joining me in the booth to help uh, detail the commentary. First up, we have Simon Bennett from Chile attempting constant weight to 72 meters and then followed by Leo Maroka from Hawaii, the founder of the Ho Now Now Divers Club, uh, attempting a free immersion dive to 71 meters. Very excited about these first two performances. Uh, Jesse obviously must be very excited knowing that you've known Leo for quite some time, yeah? Mm -hmm, yes. He is um, one of the Ho Now Now Bay dive crew in Kona, Big yeah. Island. And, uh, uh, we get together every Sunday, and I get I try to go there whenever I'm back in Kona yeah. and to join the crew. And Leo is also one of the most uh, senior members of the group, and yeah. uh, they along uh, he along with Annabelle and Bill Graham, uh, Graham and they are just uh, um, enjoying diving and uh, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 40, 50, even 60 I, I, years. I believe Leo Maroka, 63 years young, attempting a 71 meter dive in free immersion. Uh, yes. I mean, I hope I'm doing those kind of dives when I'm his age. Exactly, that's how we feel. Okay, so here it goes Simon. Yep, Simon Bennett from Chile, originally from the States, migrated to Chile, and now he's doing a constant weight 72 meter dive here at Vertical Blue 2018. Oh, something went wrong. He had turned oh. very early. What happened? Nose clip fell off. Ear problem. So it looked as though Simon's nose clip fell off. Mm. I, I know this was a huge struggle for me when I made the transition to a nose clip. I originally started with a nose clip and I just thought all nose clips were the same. And uh, nose clips, uh, if you're familiar with free diving at all, obviously you need the right mask originally. It needs to be able to fit, keep water out, give you good vision, all those types of things. And sort of when you start free diving, your mask becomes your most important piece of equipment right away. Um, and then what happens is, you know, as you transition from that, you know, you want to stay in the water longer and then your wetsuit sort of becomes the most important piece of equipment. But a lot of these athletes uh, diving without a mask uh, utilize the nose clip. And when we're in the warm waters <laughs> of here in the Bahamas. Okay. Today is Simon's birthday. Yeah, so uh, I'm Happy not birthday, sure how Simon. old, uh, but in the tradition, uh, yep. You can see a shattered egg on his head in the tradition of Jonathan Sunex uh, smashing an egg on someone's head here at Vertical Blue has become a tradition and so Simon celebrating his birthday to here in the Bahamas couldn't think of a better place uh, to celebrate it's such a beautiful island that we have here um, competing in this uh, vertical blue free diving competition hopefully that's uh, Simon's shortest dive of the competition <laughs> hopefully maybe he just couldn't wait to celebrate <laughs> yes possibly yeah. the egg yeah. Give him a uh, boost in his mood and how Yeah, he maybe a little bit of protein idea. will help uh, help with his performances in the future. But yeah, back to the nose clip. I know a lot of freedivers out there, you know, they're thinking about making the transition to a nose clip and fluid goggles or the nose clip and no mask. And, and, and so it's really about fit. And there's a lot of different choices out there with the nose clips. And I, I know myself, I probably, oh, I, I went through 10, 12 nose clips before I found one that actually worked for me. And mm -hmm. I, I've settled on a Molchanov's nose clip, the whale tail, it gives me nice coverage. And most importantly, it actually stays on my face during the dive. The one downside to pretty much wearing a nose clip that I can think of uh, in all my training is that you can't wear sunscreen. So I don't know, maybe Simon, a mm -hmm. little bit of sunscreen, a little bit of oil on the nose. You have to make sure that your nose is very dry before you add the nose clip mm -hmm. on there. I put sunscreen on my nose. I just tighten it. Like really tight really yeah and so you put the sunscreen on first and then the nose clip i put sunscreen on before i came out to beach okay yeah and then when i dive i just tighten it and yeah. really tight and it worked for me and it manages to stay on mm -hmm. so I, I i've tried that as well uh, because in training i don't wear the nose clip uh, or i wear the nose clip to do all my dives and i obviously don't want to get sunburned 
Uh, but for me, I've never found one with sunscreen that stays on my nose. What kind of sunscreen are you using? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I use our um, different varieties, but try to go for the reef friendly ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it's the shape of the nose too, you know. Yeah. It could be. And, and so something that Jesse just brought up that's really important to talk about is, you know, we're, we're free divers. We have this strong connection to the ocean. And I know that we all want to preserve uh, the aquatic environment and the marine resources that we have, in particular the coral. And the, the corals are really the building blocks uh, for the marine ecosystem. And they're very, very important to all other marine life. A lot of people put the emphasis on sharks and whales. And, and, and it's really the corals that are the foundation for the marine ecosystem. And uh, what we found through scientific research is that the, some of the chemicals contained in the ma vast majority of sunscreens uh, contain oxybenzone, which is actually a plant-based form of estrogen. And so uh, when uh, divers or ocean goers wear this sunscreen, what it does is it washes off the skin uh, of the people entering into the ocean. And uh, when this oil from the oxybenzone settles on the reef, it can actually dis rub the reproductive cycles of the coral so in essence it causes coral bleaching and we've seen this in uh, areas like hawaii and indonesia where tourists and people are in the water quite frequently where the coral is actually dying and so the whole marine ecosystem is dying so for all you guys at home i'd really really recommend looking into what your reef safe sunscreen options are available to you and generally those are going to be zinc oxide based sunscreens i know there's quite a few other ones out there but if it doesn't say reef safe it's not good for the environment and it's also not good for you um so something to just be conscious of uh, when you make your decision in sunscreen i know we all want to be safe protected from the sun uh but we also need to make a you know conscious decision to help protect the environment as well yeah it's very important thing and very good point thanks Dan. So next up, Leo Maroka. Leo Maroka is from the United States, hailing from Hawaii, originally Japanese. He's attempting a free immersion dive to 71 meters, 63 years young. We're hoping this dive lasts a little longer than our last performance by Simon Bennett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Leo, Leo loves diving, yeah. Yeah, you can really see the passion for he, it. Uh, he built his own little um, flotation with the paddle surfboards yep. and he um, like body surfing boards mm -hmm. and he puts the lines the weight systems and you know setting up the training lines in the bay like does all of this himself designs how to make it easier to carry around because in hawaii you actually need to carry it off uh you know over the rock reef yes not reef sorry the rock uh how do yeah. you say it like a rock, rocky beach yeah rocky yeah. beach and then we put it uh, in the water and had to swim out for yeah. a couple hundred meters where we get deeper water a so i know leo always carries uh, all the these little yeah. equipment to himself and just swims it out yeah uh, and so to about 80 meters deep that, water yeah that that's really i mean the beauty of here in the bahamas we just saw some of the italian athletes on the beach they're literally right now less than 20 meters from us um, and so Dean's Blue Hole, you can practically fall off the beach into the water and in other areas around the world. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. athletes like Leo have devised ways to get mm -hmm. out to depth and be able to dive. Yeah. And, and so, that shows just how much passion he has for the sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that, that's a, that, that, that people like Leo were really the foundational aspect of what has allowed the sport to be where it is today. I mean, he was the one thinking of the equipment. Uh, that, that we are now using, you know, so we just innovated basically things that he he's created. What? So back to Leo Maroka, 63 years young, about to attempt a 71 meter dive in free immersion. So Leo expressed to me earlier in the week that uh, at 63 years old, he's hoping to attempt his personal best dive, uh, I believe somewhere in the mid 80s in constant weight. Uh, absolutely incredible to me that he's still pushing that hard at his age group. And I, I think that attests to the fantastic shape that Leo has uh, managed to keep himself in throughout the years. I know that mm -hmm. diving is a big part of that regiment. I'm sure his diet is a big part of that ex uh, regiment, but I'm also excited to talk to him about if he does any type of fitness training outside of diving or if it's just diving alone that keeps him that fit yeah, he's uh, challenging himself and enjoying it 
Yeah, absolutely. You can see the enjoyment on his face and all the conversations I've had with him. Uh, just really happy, uh, go lucky guy, very easy to talk to. Yeah. And so we're wishing him a lot of success in this upcoming mm -hmm. performance. He was here uh, for the very first Vertigo Blue uh, competition in 2008. And he's been in Bahamas competing for quite a long time. And I think this is the coming back for him after a five year break from the Bahamas. So let's hope that he makes this dive. Yeah, so our first two athletes of the day, Simon Bennett and Leo Morocco, were two of the original three athletes that were here at Vertical Blue. So the original Vertical Blue competition was hosted by Will Truebridge. It was actually safetyed by many of the divers in the competition, and it was sort of a gathering so that these divers could attempt world and national records and stuff like that. And so Simon Bennett and Leo Morocco actually attended the very first Vertical Blue, obviously, along with its founder, Will Truebridge. So a couple of the most tenured uh, divers um, uh, on the lines here this week at Vertical Blue. Go Leo! I know a lot of divers back in Hawaii looking forward to this dive. One of the legends of the sport from our home state. Jesse and I here in the booth at Vertical Blue 2018 cheering on Leo. 28 meters. And so what depth do you pull to, Jesse? 35, I 35. have an alarm and I start to free fall. And that's when your arms come by your sides? Yeah. And so Leo going a bit deeper than mm -hmm. that. He's going pretty deep. Which I think a lot of people are, you know, kind of making that switch in, in free immersion, You're trying to speed up the dives. Uh, you probably experience the most, you know, most CO2, well, maybe not the most CO2, no fins as well, but, you know, the dives are quite long and, uh, and then also some of the most narcosis. So by speeding up the dives a little bit, uh, you can see Leo mm -hmm. looking for the he plate. For the plate. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Leo, he's, he's got the tag. All right. Leo was peeking a little early for that bottom plate, but he managed to make it. And now he's got to make it back to the surface. Can the 63-year-old from Hawaii make it to the surface? Free immersion dive, 71 meters. Go, Leo. And how hard is it? I, I remember when I first started to dive deeper than 60 meters to not peek for the plate. You know, it's uh, always something we tell students not to do because mm. there's tension added on to the trachea when you extend your neck Absolutely. and look backward. Very likely to cause a better trauma to your trachea. Yeah, which is a form of beginners. lung squeeze. Um, and I've never seen Leo underwater diving at that depth before. We only see how he leaves the surface. Mm. But this is the first time I see him through the dive eye. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's such an experienced seasoned diver and uh, he's got, you know, really great adaptation and maybe it's something in his sort of habit or something that he knows he can do. I'm not sure, mm. but always, you know, we say it's, it's better to just keep your chin tucked in and and I, I think that's Don't a big, a big thing in beginners, you know, it's something I'm always correcting students in my free dive classes is, you know, drop the chin, drop the chin. And, uh, you know, it not only helps improve equalization, but better streamlining and also protects the trachea. So here we have Leo at the surface. Uh, Nose clip comes off. Strong. Fantastic surface Good protocol. Job, what will the judges decide? The 63-year-old from Hawaii. Will he get a white card on his 71-meter free immersion attempt? One of Vertical Blue's original competitors, Leo Morocco. Wow. Woo! All right, white card. Fantastic Beautiful. dive from the Hawaiian.
so next up, Andrew Kvetkovich from Ukraine, attempting 70 meters in free immersion. Yesterday, setting the national record in constant weight, no fins. We'll see if the Ukrainian can go a little bit deeper in a different discipline. Free immersion, pulling down the rope. We have an estimated dive time of two minutes and 45 seconds for the Ukrainian. So great to see Leo make that dive. Yes. I'm sure Annabelle Edwards back home and Bill Graham mm, are all very excited. Yes, our friends uh, back in Kona must be cheering for him and so feeling so happy about that. Yeah, Billy Middleton and uh, Kurt Chambers and everyone else back in Hawaii. Uh, you guys can be very proud of Leo. I know you guys all said to give him best wishes before the dive. I haven't had the chance to talk with them. Uh, but I'll be certain to let him know that you guys were all rooting for him uh, here at Vertical Blue 2018 from back in Hawaii. So setting the line next dive, Andrzej Kvetkovich from Ukraine, free immersion, 70 meters. A little bit of the action from the beach, some of the athletes likely discussing their dives from today, maybe making some plans for the next couple of dives. underwater view from the dive eye drone as you can see there the official competition area we love having the fans come down all the locals uh, competitors girlfriends wives boyfriends. children boyfriends <laughs> boyfriends <laughs> absolutely husbands and uh, a, a, they're welcome to watch it I don't think you can have a sport where you can get a closer view in the water with these athletes. I think it's also very unique that uh, freediving at this stage, uh, this is sort of an invite only competition, uh, but the majority of freediving competitions anyone can attend. Yes, actually, uh, I think the vertical blue works uh, that the top freedivers got invited first and then has the priority to sign up. Yeah. And then it's open to public after a certain yep. time point. Yep. yep. And, and so really unique in that, you know, you can uh, attend um, basically the Wimbledon of uh, freediving uh, as an amateur competitor. You can come here and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world's best, Alexei Molchanov, Will Truebridge, Omar Leucci, Alessia Zaccini. Uh, so yeah, just uh, really, really, really cool that uh, people are able to do that. Here we have Andrew Kvetkovich from Ukraine attempting 70 meters in free immersion. 
Andrew actually uh, owns a dive shop in Hawaii. Yes, I remember he mentioned. I think it was on Oahu. On Oahu, yeah. I haven't been there, but I, I, I just, uh, I just heard about that yesterday. So he said he's going to start carrying some of this top free diving equipment that we've been discussing over the last few days in our broadcast. Next up to dive needs a check and she'll be attempting a free immersion dive to 63 meters. So Andrew, very new to the sport of free diving, just started in February of 2017. He's a Patty free diving instructor. His first competition was in Dahab at the Red Cup in May of 2018. So this is actually only his second competition. He only performed no fins and took the bronze medal. His non-competitive PBs and constant weight and free immersion are 70 and 66 so this is going to be a little bit better than his personal best and Andrew's training he does a lot of meditation both before during and after his dive so for him free diving is a a form of meditation I think that's true for a lot of these athletes do you do, you do any meditation on land or do you just find meditative state in your free diving I started doing some meditation in preparation for the competition yes awesome um, it's great. Yeah. And did you have anybody to teach you that or is it something you kind of learned on your own? I read about a mindfulness practice and uh, just kind of tried out for myself. Mm. Mm. And so it's really about quieting the mind, limiting the amount of thoughts, yeah? Yes. And I find it, um, I, I let it go. Sometimes I just let thoughts come and if I feel enjoying thinking through the thoughts and mm. maybe from a different angle or maybe observing myself mm. it, it sometimes gives me a little bit of uh, like inspiration yeah okay so it looks like Andrew is touching ready. down at 70 meters grabbing the tag Andrew Kvetkovic from Ukraine Yay. he's made his depth Very strong athlete, very physically fit. Interesting to see him, like you, targeting many of his PBs here in competition. Andrew looking solid. Breaks the surface. Removes the nose clip. And gives the okay signal. Very relaxed dive for the Ukrainian. Will the, will the judges give him a white card and he can improve upon his personal best in this discipline? Mm. White card for Andrew Kvetkovich from Ukraine. 70 meters free immersion. Terrific dive from the Ukrainian. Next up, needs a check from Sylvania. Free immersion, 63 meters in an estimated dive time. Two minutes and 15 seconds. So packing his lungs here at the surface. We see Andrew making his turn in his descent. A 
And so free immersion definitely a discipline where the entry technique, like all the dives, is obviously still important, but a little bit easier in that you're aided by the rope, yeah. A little bit, uh... A little bit easier uh, than like a no fins entry or a constant weight entry because you're aided by the rope to help pull yourself down. There's still obviously some technique involved, but uh, you know, something that takes a little bit of practice. Do you, do you find that your um, free immersion entry is an easier entry than, than what you do in no fins or constant weight? Um, at, the, at the beginning, I learned all the disciplines I had no idea how to enter the water with no okay. fins in the beginning right so I was basically just kicking around the surface not going anywhere <laughs> um, and free immersion was uh, probably the, the least the technique uh, um, the easiest demanding, technique to learn demanding one yeah. so um, then I think once you get the, the hang of it, you, you get used to the way to to do the entry with a fin or without fin, it's very enjoyable. Mm. Like for me right now, I find it uh, um, very relaxing to enter that way um, and with a rope, so sometimes I feel um, it's it's easy in a way that I, I, I didn't uh, fully relax my mind, right? Because it's like if I'm nervous or if I am relaxed, I can always pull myself down. So with the constant weight or constant weight no thing entry, I always take a moment to relax my mind before I start my diet. So it, <laughs> it may be only in my case, but um, it's hard to say, you know, which, which, one, which entry is easier. Yeah. Or, um, but, but for sure, technique, technique wise, anybody can pull the line, pull the line down. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really need much of learning. And, and so yeah. for those of you out there looking to improve your equalization technique and sort of uh, get into the sport of freediving, I, I think it would be uh, safe to say that starting with free immersion diving would probably be uh, the most effective uh, discipline uh, to learn uh, the techniques in. Okay, awesome. So in just a moment here, we're going to cut over to the beach. We're going to do a little bit of an interview there. Uh, and we'll be back to the live action to check Nisa Check from Slovenia doing a free immersion dive to 63 meters. Welcome back. We're here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue 2018, our 10th anniversary. I'm Francesca Co, and I'm here with Mike Board, who had a beautiful, clean, and for him, easy white car dive to 100 meters today. Welcome to the beach interviews, Mike. Thank you. Good to be here. So tell us a little about, bit about your time here. I, I've been coming here since 2012. How long have you been coming? Um, I think uh, end of 2011 was my first vertical blue when it was in November mm -hmm. so yeah it was after the world championships in 2011 so do you prefer this time of year or the winter sessions actually the conditions actually are the best I've ever dived here I think it's my fifth vertical blue and it's either not normally it's been in May or November and uh, it's the water's always colder I mean 25 degrees 26 degrees but for me that's cold <laughs> Would you like to come visit me in Northern California, where the water is 12 degrees, I, Mike? The fact that I've said that, a lot of people are going to be going, that's not cold, but it's like, I'm a tropical diver, that's cold. <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit about the diving uh, from your current hometown in Bali. Uh, actually, the conditions are very similar now. It's 28 degrees, I think, in the water at the moment, and there's no thermic line, and this is pretty much what, what I've been training in for the last three months. So it's, it's been very little transition. The only thing that I had to get used to here is, is the dark again, because normally I dive in open ocean and there's so much light. And, um, and so you always know where you are. Whereas here, when you're coming up from a dive, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark, and then suddenly it's light. And it, it's like being a, stunt, a rabbit in the headlights sometimes, you're suddenly in the light. Yeah, so it's, that takes getting used to. So what's it been like with the little dive minion, the dive eye following you? Actually, um, I don't. I don't really find it a problem. Um, we had it in Roatan last year, and so I kind of got used to the idea. Then, it doesn't really make any noise because it's on a winch. It's just the lights. 
you know sometimes they're looking right at you and but it's okay but you've got it... other things to think about <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking about down there mike people want to know um it's you're focusing a little bit on your equalization not too much because you think about it too much is when you tend to get it wrong but uh and, and then relaxation obviously it's, we're always saying it's all about the relaxation but it is so we're really focusing on being as relaxed as possible yeah so one of the questions i get asked frequently in the comments is what is everybody eating normally it's what are they eating for breakfast but maybe you can share <laughs> it's with very us. easy for me to what, what is it for you <laughs> i only have uh, three meals that i make for myself okay oatmeal which is breakfast okay which i think a lot of people have and then uh i'll have a, an omelet a white omelet with six eggs six <laughs> And then the evening meal can be rice and tuna, like tin tuna. I eat fish whilst I'm here. A lot of the time I'm vegetarian, but there's not enough choice of foods here. So I, I tend to eat, I eat fish here. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. We're going to throw it back over to the dive action at the platform. Keep following us. Hashtag V like vertical, B like blue, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. So Nisa Jack from Slovenia making her descent. 63 meters free immersion and an estimated dive time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So that'll be a well paced dive. Mm, seems 2 like minutes short 15. Pulls and quite frequent short pulls. Yeah, quite yeah, that's mm -hmm. definitely interesting. You see a lot of athletes going with it, the, the 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 pull and glide approach kind of that seems to be like what you were utilizing, yeah. Andrew? Yeah, it's like uh, I think it's more relaxing, uh, relaxing like when you're doing like big pulls. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's safe to say that most free divers don't like to do anything quickly. Hmm? Do anything quickly underwater. Yeah, uh, if you're doing anything quickly underwater, you're just losing your oxygen. You know, so yeah, like yeah slow long kind of controlled movement seem to be uh, more effective in that capacity mm. and so she uses the hand to guide herself down the rope makes the dip looks for the tag good turn I mean, it seems like she places the tag either on her weight belt or her thigh where do you put the tag uh i put it in the hood in the hood yeah it's easy. she doesn't have that luxury because she doesn't have a hood but find another place to put the tag easiest way for me and so how the arms feel for you on the ascent today i didn't feel tired at all yeah you see that it was good and so even after diving yesterday with it, how, how did you feel on the no pins ascent yesterday actually yesterday i was thinking like oh maybe i can do no pins again to, tomorrow yeah and then like now i should change <laughs> because i have to like, like i have to change something to rest more yeah for sure it's like better yeah, I think a lot of divers like to do that constant weight, then free immersion, and then kind of alternate the discipline. So, obviously, free immersion and constant weight, taxing the arms quite a bit, and then uh, constant weight, using light, utilizing the fin, uh, much more demanding on the lower portion of the body. So, really difficult to kind of do all three disciplines well. You really need to be a well-rounded athlete to make that happen. Nisa removes the mask, removes the nose clip, gives the OK signal. The surface protocol looks good, right? Mm -hmm. Look great to me. Will she get the white card? Waiting to hear. We'll see in a couple seconds. <laughs> and a white card for the Slovenian athlete, Nisa check. 63 meters in free immersion. Fantastic dive, solid surface protocol. Great job. Yeah. So back to the beach, we've got another interview and then we'll be back to check Alfredo Rowen from Spain. He's gonna be doing a constant no fins dive to 60 meters in an estimated dive time of two minutes and 45 seconds. Hi guys, it's Francesca again on the beach and I'm here with Martin Zayat from Slovakia and you had a beautiful white card dive today. Tell us about it, Martin. Yeah, I'm very happy for my dive. 
It's one of my deepest dive uh, after eight years of uh, just teaching and traveling with students. So I'm very happy to come back and to have really good sensation and very clean exit and I'm very happy for my dive today. It was a pleasure to watch. So you've traveled all the way from Prague? Yeah, I'm teaching in Egypt, Croatia and traveling around the world like uh, Maldives and quite a lot. So what are some of your favorite places to go free diving? My favorite, Maldives are beautiful. A lot of uh, big species and I love Mex Mexico, Mexico and uh, cenotes. It's cenotes. Amazing, amazing. So is this your first time at Vertical Blue? Yeah, my first time here. Okay, so what do you think of the Blue Hole? Blue Hole is an amazing place. No current, just a little bit uh, more darkness. So, but in past I was used to train in Czech and there are just uh, lakes with very cold water and below 20-30 meters you see nothing. So it's okay for me. So your training partner, Alessia Zucchini, what secrets has she given you? Training secrets? Um, I'm learning a lot also from her because she was very strong before and I'm very happy that she's much stronger now and uh, it's hard to say but uh, we are enjoying this is the most important that to be now and here and to enjoy and to to have a pleasure from what we do well this whole community of free divers here is like one big family it's like a reunion how have you met people new people old people Last year I, I didn't compete. I stopped in 2011 after World Championship and so I'm very happy that I met here uh, a lot of old uh, friends and also some new ones and it's very nice. We are really like one big family. It was beautiful because uh, at the beginning after when I arrived my luggage was lost oh. and all friends collected equipment so I, I could train because I had only three sessions before the competition and it was so beautiful and one more thanks a lot to all who helped me. So did your luggage eventually make it here? Uh, it's already here. Oh good, <laughs> so, good, good, good. So it good. shows up, maybe a little late uh, but it shows up. Yeah. Two uh, days later. Two days later. Two days later. So any favorite disciplines for you? Before it was free immersion, now I like also constant a lot, so both are my favorite and I'm not very good in no fins, so I don't care now about this discipline, so just free immersion and constant weight. And uh, for people who don't have a lot of access to depth in the ocean, what do you recommend for training? For me, my training system is, uh, we can do almost a lot of work, almost all out of sea and then we can it's uh, like analytic approach and then we can put it together and uh, to be ready during two three weeks to do really good performance so I think it's not necessary to go to the hub to for six months and train it's quite good to do good preparation at home and then to come for two three weeks and you can do an amazing job for sure so the competitors here, everyone is diving at a super high level. Who are you excited to see? Oh, of course, Alexei is uh, great. Uh, William and uh, also Omar, pff, amazing performances. So uh, I'm very happy for training results of Alessia. She is so strong and all girls are very, very strong. So I'm, I'm curious to see all the competition. Oh, thanks, guys. Definitely. The women are on fire. Thank you for talking to us, Martin. Thanks, you too. We're going to throw back to the platform for the next diver. Again, stay tuned to hashtag V like vertical, B like blue 2018. And you'll see gorgeous images from all of our photographers, including Dan Verhoeven and Alex St. Jean. So here we are, back to the action. Alfredo Rowen from Spain. Attempting a constant no fins dive to 60 meters. Alfredo had a fantastic dive yesterday. Very strong athlete. Always making the performances look very easy. Expect to see another great performance here from Alfredo. Alfredo, big deep breath, packing his lungs a couple of times. This 
Spanish athlete getting ready to make his descent. And then he begins. So kind of an interesting technique that Alfredo uses that I'm noticing right off the bat. He has the traditional, uh, you know, pull with the arms and then the uh, frog kick style. But he also does kind of a little bit of a whip kick, like the mo like kind of like a dolphin style kick that I saw at the top of the dive. Mm -hmm. it was a sort of interesting. Always interesting with the dive eye to be able to see all these divers' different techniques for descending to depth. 60 meters, 198 feet on a single breath of air. No fins, self-propelled. Certainly free diving's most challenging discipline. And Alfredo Ruen from Spain is halfway there. So this is one meter short of your PB, yeah? Mm. yeah. You see a lot of the athletes, you know, they'll kind of specialize in constant weight and also free immersion, but uh, it, it, sometimes they kind of shy away from this no fins discipline, yeah? <laughs> I think uh, it's the one that requires the most uh, mental investment to, to train and to yep. do that. Yeah. And Alfredo were looking really solid. I mean, that was a uh, textbook descent there. Oh, nice pull there. Nice pull. Great arm strokes. And, and so what Jesse's alluding to is that in the no fins discipline, uh, the discomfort due to elevated CO2 levels for a lot of athletes, it, it, it starts almost it, during the sink phase. And so it takes a lot of uh, mental concentration to move through that. And it also takes a huge amount of physical fitness uh, to be able to propel yourself back up from depth with a tremendous amount of water pressure um, on your person. Uh, and so Alfredo Loren looking really solid here in his technique, very streamlined, strong arm strokes. And one thing you notice is he really brings the heels up very high, uh, almost all the way to his buttocks. Um, so he's getting the most out of those leg kicks as well uh, and really propelling himself. Sometimes an under underrated part of the no fins technique is the leg kick, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's got a, I think, a pretty good propulsion from the leg kick. Definitely a great propulsion from the legs. So Alfredo Rowan from Spain, almost to the surface after his 60 meter, no fins attempt here at the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Championships. And so Alfredo removes the, the fluid goggles, removes the nose clip, and delivers a strong surface protocol to the judges. I think that will likely result in a white card from the judges for Alfredo. Mm -hmm. Beautiful dive, Alfredo Rowan from Spain. No fins dive to 60 meters, another strong performance from the Spaniard. We're going to cut over to the beach and we'll be back to the platform with me and Jesse Liu in just a moment for Bianca Kim from Korea's constant weight attempt to 58 meters. Hey guys, welcome back to the beach. I'm here with longtime resident of Long Island, Michelle. Michelle, tell us a little bit about Long Island and why you decided to come move here. Wow, wow, wow. So um, we've been here 10 years. We're full-time residents for three years, but we've been here for 10 years as second homeowners or was winter residents. We love it. Long Island is amazing. It is over 70 miles long and there are incredible beaches in blue, gin blue, crystal clear water from tip to tail incredible architecture landscape the people are really what brought us here in addition to the incredible water so there are like settlements or neighborhoods it seems that nobody has an actual street address tell us about that no 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 and if someone tries to mail you something it'll take months we just got some christmas presents but uh yeah throughout the island there's a series of settlements and everything is spread out so you don't have an official mailing address for example we're in thompson bay which is just north of salt pond in long island so we are the 
uh, general delivery to the liquor store, which is our post office in Salt Pond, and it's addressed Bali House, Michelle Rickman, Bali House, uh, Salt Pond, Long Island. And it's they kinda, find us. It's kind of cool. And this is what's known as a family island, and the islands of the Bahamas, which are all beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes a family island? Uh, so the family islands are, are the little islands outside of Nassau and Freeport and they're an incredible little collection of the archipelago down here and it's they call them the out islands or the family islands and they're just a simple simple lifestyle there it's not the Nassau that most people know as the Bahamas it's um, zero commercialism just nice incredible people and it is truly all about families everybody is a family down here yeah, and I think that is, you know, echoed in the freediving community as well. So I think that's why part of the reason that it's nice to be here, aside from 202 meters of depth, uh, the people, the people are so welcoming and it's fun to come back here every year. What does this competition, Origin ECN Vertical Blue, mean to this island? Oh, it means so much. Everybody looks forward to seeing the competitors, the athletes come every year because it's such a nice group and they do feel like part of the family island when they come back we see so many familiar faces every year and I I would say from tip to tail of this island everybody looks forward to the vertical blue and the athletes coming back we miss you guys you're always welcome back well as long as you guys keep serving us conch burgers we're gonna keep coming back <laughs> yeah the world's best conch burgers conch fritters and conch salad everywhere it doesn't get any fresher than Long Island and this is a new time of year for us. We're normally here, well, we used to come in November and then it got moved to May, sort of April, May. This is July, it's a little windy right now, but the water quality and the clarity and the warmth, the athletes are all just going ecstatic about the conditions. Is this typical? You know, I would say this wind is not typical for this time of year. I would, I'm quite surprised to see the winds out here, but the clarity and the depth of the water and the, and the warmth of the water, this is to be expected. We love it here in the summer. We stay through the summer and it's quiet and the water is the best. So now I know that there are beautiful beaches all over Long Island, but for the viewers who may be coming sometime because they've seen the pristine, beautiful Dean's Blue Hole and they're hearing all these great things, what are some of your favorite beaches on Long Island? Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, it kind of depends on the wind direction, so they do vary day to day. We have a good practice of checking the wind direction. Um, everybody hears about Lockabar Beach. It's incredible. Galloway Beach is incredible. Um, we have a secret spot called, um, well, a lot of people refer to it as the beach at Compass Rose. The Compass Rose Beach is the most, it's a quintessential, perfect crescent-shaped cove beach. Perfectly protected from the Atlantic. It is on the Atlantic side. It is pristine. I also like uh, roses. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's a good spot. Very romantic, nice little, and chances are you'll be the only person there. Good chance. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We're going to throw back to the platform for some of the following divers that are coming up. Just a few more. This is session three of day two of Origin ECN Vertical Blue. Stay tuned and send us more comments and questions and cheer on your favorite diver on facebook.com slash vertical blue. Thanks Francesca. All right, welcome back to the platform. I'm Ben Zions, your host. I'm here with Jesse Liu, Chinese athlete who attempted the world record in free immersion yesterday. Uh, next up, we have Bianca Kim from Korea attempting a constant weight dive to 58 meters. Uh, we saw a strong dive from Bianca yesterday, uh, one of our newest competitors. So uh, she's just uh, feeling out the, the second day jitters here at Vertical Blue. Uh, looking forward to a little deeper dive from Bianca today, 58 meters. Um, Really great to see these uh, athletes who are new to the sport coming out here and competing uh, at freediving center stage, yeah? Yes. Yeah, Bianca was uh, my coach yesterday. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I really, really enjoy training with her. And uh, she went to Greece, actually. Um, during training, she was there for work okay. for a little bit. And she just came back the day before the competition started. Oh, so man. So I really, really missed her and uh, missed her energy so when she came back i just asked her would you come and coach my dive yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, 
I, I just uh, I just feel really happy. Uh, so you'll be so you'll be really you'll happy. be you'll be rooting hard for Bianca on this mm, dive then. For sure, yes, I am. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so yeah. really interesting that she took. What does she do for work? Do you know? Uh, she loves music. She was a music teacher. Okay. And she plays guitar and uh, piano and I think some other instruments. And um, she still travels and plays music. Cool. Yeah. So she's a professional musician. That's mm -hmm. really awesome. Mm -hmm. And taking a little break from her professional music career to come here to Vertical Blue and attempt a 58 meter dive in constant weight today here mm -hmm. at the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Championships live from the Bahamas. So looking forward to see what Bianca Kim can do uh, in this freediving discipline this mm -hmm. afternoon. So Jesse, something that you sort of alluded to earlier in the broadcast and we didn't really have time to highlight it on since, or highlight on since, was that you uh, took a trip uh, to Antarctica recently mm -hmm. and uh, did some diving there uh, with another famous freediver, Kimmy Werner. Who else was on that trip? Uh, Kimmy Werner from Hawaii. Um, we have Edmund Jing from California, and who was also the uh, leader of our trip, and he had the idea of going to Antarctica for free dive. Also, uh, Dan Silvera, who is the cameraman and an excellent free diver and spear fisherman from California. So it was that crew. We have four of us, uh, along with a polar guide, Dixie, um, who was kind of giving us tips and safety guidance. Yeah. And what time of the year did you go to Antarctica? It was January. Uh, it was the summertime for Antarctic. So the water was... Uh, and so still... what's summertime like in Antarctica? <laughs> it, it was uh, uh, snow mountains. Um, water was about minus two Celsius. It's the temperature of the mix of iceberg and, and seawater. So a little different than here in the Bahamas. Then. <laughs> Very different. I think that's safe to say. Yeah, um, I'm always uh, afraid of being cold and I, uh, I, I hated winter when I grew up because I always get uh, sickness with my fingers, so like these clogged uh, yeah. blood vessels and, yeah. and inflammation swelling. I had that for years. Uh, I always just wanted to live in a tropical island, that's why I moved to Hawaii. Yep. Um, going to Antarctica was like a personal, personal challenge for me. Um, so it was organized by Harbor House Life. Yeah. When I got the invitation, I thought well, would I survive? You know, <laughs> when I lived in Indianapolis in the United States for graduate school, every winter when I stepped into the snow for five minutes, I felt yeah. I was gonna die. That was my emotional feeling. I know I wasn't really gonna die. I can emotion, relate. I can relate to that, that feeling growing up on a fishing boat in New England. Uh, certainly, <laughs> the cold does not appeal to me in any way whatsoever. Yeah. And because I was going like in short notice, I only had two weeks to prepare. Basically, okay. just getting my visa and getting my equipment ready. Yeah. So I didn't uh, have any kind of cold water diving adaptation leading to it. Um, and so we have our staff photographer here, Dan Verhoeven. Yeah. Uh, check him out um, on Instagram for sure. Yes. Uh, he's an awesome, photographer. awesome photographer. Yeah, I know yeah. he's done some work with you, Jesse. And ton of fun to work with. Yeah. Yeah, ton of fun to work with him. Yeah. Creative. Um, yeah, so so back to her, back to what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually didn't know what to expect, and uh, we sailed across Drake's Passage, um, yeah. a very small sailboat, about 15 meters long, and it was uh, us five, including Captain and uh, and his assistant. So seven of us, we we rocked and just in huge, huge choppy oceans. Day one of the uh, one of the most days. challenging ocean passages in the world in extremely yeah, cold water it's, it's going to antarctica on a group uh, uh on a boat with a group of five individuals to go free diving right to so a lot of people um, at home i'm probably i'm pretty sure that doesn't make a lot of sense um we're definitely going to talk to you a little bit more about that when we come back from break here we're going to uh, jump over to the beach yeah. and have another interview Hi guys, we're back at the beach. We had a DNS. DNS is the acronym for an athlete who did not start. Uh, sometimes people announce and they 
don't feel like diving that day. Sometimes people show up too late and they can't dive. Uh, so we're going to take a little time and chat with our chief of engineering, one of our more seasoned safety divers, Roberto Berto from Australia. Welcome to the beach interview. Thank you very much, Francesca. It's great to be here as always. Fourth year now and uh, still loving every second here. So what's involved in setting all of this up? I mean, there's a lot happening in the pre-weeks leading up to the event. Can you share a little insight with all the viewers, all the work that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you can see, like the competition has to run as smoothly as possible. We're running to a, a tight schedule, like within 30 seconds of each day. So we have, the preparation is the most important part. Um, the logistics is possibly the most uh, challenging thing here on Long Island. It's a paradise because there's not much here, uh, but it also makes us the most challenging uh, task for us to make it all happen on, on time and, and uh, safely and, and as professionally as possible, basically. So can you talk a little bit about, like, literally, I feel like you were building this new dive-by platform just a few days ago. Yeah, absolutely. So the dive-by platform was a challenge for us this year. Uh, first of all, being the first year, it ha uh, having introduced it, and only having literally only a few days to uh, construct it and make it suitable for the operation, uh, working in with the dive eye team, but also uh, Hey, aloha, Hi, welcome back. We uh, lost a little bit of uh, camera footage from the beach, so we're back here in the booth. Um, waiting for our next dive, uh, Bianca Kim. Uh, Looks like uh, maybe she didn't ask today. She Timing. didn't dive today? No. So we're going to skip her, we're going to yeah. go to Ricardo Paris. Yeah. Ricardo Paris is Paris. next up to dive. Yeah. From the United States, he's going to do a constant weight dive to 48 meters in an announced dive time of a minute and 45 seconds. So, yeah. not sure why Bianca didn't make uh, it today. It's hard for her, because she just came off the plane, and yeah. she was here yesterday to coach me, and he, she didn't have time to train before competition. Yep. Uh, and we didn't have time to like kind of, uh, work out our like coaching routines and how we work together. But it was all like a new experiment all at once. Totally. And for her, I know that she loved diving, she loved training, and. Uh, I'm sure she uh, may be feeling still a little tired from having to watch my dive yesterday. It was, for anybody here, I think for anybody who watched it, it must be a, quite a bit of toll on the emotion. So, and she did her dive yesterday. I think she, she's probably getting a little rest today. Yeah, well, it's great to see you back and healthy for sure. And it's awesome that you've been sharing your experiences uh, in Antarctica. Sounds like quite a wild time. It's been yeah. awesome having you in the booth today. We've yeah. got a couple <laughs> more dives to go. Three more dives, Ricardo Perez, yeah. Tatsuma Kitahara, and Junko Kitahama. Uh, so we're looking forward to, to finishing up the day with two strong performances by the Japanese athletes. Mm. Yeah. So do you think uh, you'll ever go back to Antarctica? Mm, I do. I think I would uh, go there, but not sailing this time. <laughs> the, the sailing part, uh, I've never put my body through so much suffering really? and uh, in the end I think the reward was really surprisingly good. It mm -hmm. was so beautiful and Arctic and so many cute penguins diving on the water. Yeah. I could spend days just watching them. Okay. And so here we have uh, here Ricardo we have. Paris about to start his descent. And so this is the first dive that we've seen this week in Bifins. Uh, is this something that you do much of, Jesse, diving with the bifins? Um, I started learning, of course, with bifins. Um, and teaching, always use bifins for safety and for um, better Your recreational diving. Yeah, and for maybe just fun diving. Um, Have you tried any deep dives with the bifins? Uh, I did. I actually did my first uh, national record in constant weight with five things it was six, the ability to 65 meters okay yeah, in 2015. Mm. and so we have ricardo here 
touching down at the bottom, grabbing the tag at 48 meters. And so originally, I mean, this is how most divers uh, did constant weight. They all dove with bifins. Mm. I think one of the most historic records was Umberto Pelizzari uh, breaking 80 meters with the bifins uh, not, not, not too long ago. So pretty recent in history that uh, divers have transferred over to utilizing the monofin, uh, obviously due to an increased level of efficiency. And um, I forget who it was, but uh, there was an individual, I believe from Canada, uh, Eric Fatah. And I think that he was the first to introduce the monofin to freediving, yeah? Mm, might be, yeah. I, I know he is a, a definitely a major contributor to the sport uh, in terms of equalization as well as equipment evaluation and de yeah. development. Yeah. I, I believe he was the first person to set a world record in a triathlete suit, uh, mm -hmm. utilizing a monofin, diving in cold water with no warm up. And I also believe, I could be wrong, don't quote me on any of this at home, that he was the first athlete, or the only athlete, to ever set a world record in cold water. Mm. I think uh, since then, all of the dives have been done in warm water. So really a pioneer in the sport. And this mouthfill technique that we've been talking about throughout the week was something that was detailed by Eric Fatah um, in depth. And so uh, he has a terrific manual out there for all of you guys uh, that are interested in learning more about the sport of freediving. Check out liquidvision.com. You can request that manual from Eric. Uh, I believe it's like 90 or 100 bucks, but there's a lot of great tricks and tips and secrets in there. I bought it early on in my freediving career and read through it. And there's definitely some very useful information you can implement in your training techniques. And Eric's really great about answering questions and sort of a visionary in the sport of freediving. And definitely it was a different thinker. And uh, I haven't had the opportunity to meet him, but one day I would love to uh, pick Eric's brain. Mm, me too, yeah. It looks like it, Ricardo was happy about the, his performance. Yeah, absolutely. A white card. Beautiful yeah. white card. And so for all you spear, fish, spear fishermen out there mm -hmm. watching uh, Ricardo uh, dive to 48 meters in constant weight in bifins with a mask. So uh, just like uh, all of our spear fishing divers out there, something that they can relate to as well. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, Tatsuma Kitahara from Japan is going to do a free immersion dive to 48 meters. But first, we're going to cut over to the beach mm -hmm. for a quick interview. So we're back at the beach and I'm here with Roberto Berto. He's our chief of engineering and one of our senior safeties. And if you want to follow Roberto on Instagram, you may never find him because he's not under his name. He's under Roboto, spelled like boat, but all teasing aside, you have a very challenging task because you have to put together basically the infrastructure that supports this world-class competition and it's not just the logistics and the orientation it's literally building stuff so give us some insight to what that that's like yeah well it's it's definitely a challenge and a task um that's that i love uh, this is my fourth year here at vb um and this year we've taken on the role of the chief engineering side of things um the biggest thing is being such a remote place you need to know how to work with what you have um, you can preempt what problems you might have and you can bring some tools or supplies from home but uh, working here with minimal stuff at times is um, is definitely challenging yet rewarding um, and that's what we we revel in basically and how does the local community fit into that yeah you you can't get much done on the island without the local knowledge these guys know what's available from where at what time and so we sort of we work in well where we can um, the, the local Bahamians have been amazing. I can't thank them enough. Um, anything we need, any time, they, they're here to assist. And yeah, I, it's big thanks to them. It makes my job a lot easier. So, um, rumor has it, at least word on the street from the locals, is that they prefer working with you than previous organization helper Johnny Sonnex. Is that true? <laughs> Ah, oh, that sounds about right. Look, Johnny's taught me how to delegate things and it works. But you have to use your pleases and thank yous. I think that goes a long way here with the Bahamian people. Are you 
trying to say that Australians are politer than Kiwis? What are you saying? Well, that's a given, you know. We're, we're nice people. They call us convicts, but hey, we, uh, we do our best. We're just messing with you, Brew. Heaps messing with you. We miss you, Johnny. So tell me what you think about the competition. I mean, the female divers are insane and off the charts. Absolutely, Francesca. Last year was a, a huge lineup. And um, nonetheless, this year, the, the stakes are just getting higher and higher. What, what the ladies are, are doing in the water is, is breathtaking. It's amazing. Um, we have already seen world record attempts on day one. Um, we really don't know how far the ladies can take it this year. The, the numbers are a big question mark. We know there, there will be world records broken. By whom? There's many people at, um, in the lineup for it, many, many of the ladies. So it's, uh, it's definitely a tight and tough competition. And um, yeah, they've got strategies and they're, they're gonna be working them strategies. Well, what's amazing is that the four living women who have ever reached 100 meters in competition are here. They're all here simultaneously. And so, like you say, it's going to be a very tight race and nobody knows what's going to happen, but they all look super strong. Tell me about what you're seeing in terms of the male divers. Yeah, the men, the, the stakes have risen so much higher once again. In the last few years, a 100 meter dive is, is pretty much the norm now. Um, of course, we've got the, the world champions, you know, Alexi and, and Will here, which is, is amazing to watch them head to head, toe to toe in the water each day. But there's a lot of guys in the 120s and, and you know, between 110 and 120 when it's going to be really stiff competition. The likes of Mike Ford, Omar Lucci, uh, Vincenzo Fer Ferry and, and all these guys, they're, they're solid divers and their performances are speaking for themselves. Um, so yeah, it's just who plays the game game the best, who, who gets white cards basically, the points are really going to tell the story at the end of the day and it's a little bit of a chess game still right we're only on day two and it's sort of see what you're doing but think about your own plan and I think that Alexi and William like to do that chess back and forth I actually think that they egg each other on absolutely they've been around for a long time like this is Will's competition he um, he knows how to play the game and um, and, so, and that's what makes him such an elite athlete. It's not expending too much energy at the start, but just enough to perhaps um, make your athlete make a, a mistake or, and you come, out, you come out all right, you know? So. Yeah, and this is the 10th anniversary, uh, Origin ECN Vertical Blue, 10th edition. Um, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna be doing uh, to, to honor and remember folks that we have worked with here before yeah so like um all this all that you see around us uh wouldn't be possible without our predecessors you know whether it be athletes or safeties you know uh we had a shocking year last year with our passing of our chief safety so we're all here to honor him and uh do the best we can and there's not a day we've uh we won't forget stephen yeah so thanks and we're gonna go back to the diving action see you back here at the beach Okay, so back to Tatsuma Kitahara from uh, Japan. Free immersion dive to 48 meters, looking strong so far. Wearing the mask, so you're going to see that there's going to be either a little pause in between the pulls to equalize. And I think uh, it, Jesse Luke can give a little more detail to this, but this is why a lot of divers switch over to the nose clip, is so that they have uh, the ability to use the, the hands, have them free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to stop and equalize and then go and stop again. Yep. Mm. And, and so I meet a lot of divers that are, you know, struggling with the no fins discipline and, and, and maybe even free immersion. And in constant weight, you can continue to kick down and, and grip the nose and equalize. And unless you can equalize hands free, the free immersion discipline and particularly no fins, I mean, in, in my opinion, is almost impossible to achieve deep depths. Uh, you can do it, but it, it makes the dive so much more difficult. Right. So it's really advantageous to start learning uh, switching over to the nose clip and if, if what they are looking for is depth like yeah for example in the sport or the competition competitive free diving yes in in terms of seeing the underwater world and just have a different experience i think mask is excellent. yeah absolutely yeah. for sure a good fitting mask is really 
for recreational free diving is super important, but for the competitive disciplines, the, the nose up can really help your performances greatly. And so the mask comes off, the OK signal is shown, the tag is produced, and Tatsuma Kitahara from Japan will hopefully be starting Vertical Blue 2018 with a white card. Yeah! All right, so one more performance left on the J. Junko Kitahara from Japan will be attempting free immersion to 40 meters and a dive time of two minutes. And so something that I actually hadn't even thought of and that Jesse highlighted earlier in the broadcast was uh, learning how to use the nose clip on land before you use it in the water. Mm -hmm. I, I learned how to use the nose clip uh, doing free immersion warm-up dives. Uh, those, so I would wear the nose clip during my warm-ups and then I would switch over to the mask and, uh, on my deeper dives. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it became comfortable for me to wear the nose clip all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe for those of you out there who are really trying to get into the nose clip, uh, might be a good idea, you know, to start utilizing it on land, practicing your mouth fill technique. Certainly in the pool, it's going to help big time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. It just feels e simpler. Um, we can be, maybe for example, preparing something with your hands, but then you can still use the nose clip and throw to work on that technique. And, totally. And, and you can maybe watch TV and have a nice drink in your hand. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, remote control and equalize. <laughs> Yep. So, yeah. yeah, totally. So just mm -hmm. learning the basic principles of the nose clip and sort of, you know, making that gentle transition from the mask to the nose clip. Um, some athletes, you know, they're able to just make the transition very quickly. Um, but some athletes, I think what we're getting at are the ones who maybe struggle with that transition from the uh, mask to the nose clip. You're just trying to make that transition as gentle as, as possible. And so really uh, a great idea uh, by uh, Jesse Liu here to uh, start that transition maybe on dry land and then work it into the pool and then maybe you know start trying it on your depth attempts as well mm -hmm. so last dive of the day here at the origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Championships, we have Junko Kitahama from Japan attempting a 40 meter free immersion dive. It's been a great broadcast so far. We've had some fantastic dives. The highlight of today's diving, Omar Leucci from Italy, second national record today, setting a 104 meter free immersion record for the Italians. Very, very strong performance from the Italian seem as though he may even try to break his own record in constant weight and no fins which i believe is 76 meters so certainly the italian making a charge for the podium in this year's event we had a beautiful dive a beautiful display of no fins technique from william Shrewbridge earlier in the broadcast first diver of the day um the local boy from here in bahamas representing new england or new zealand i apologize uh, made a fantastic dive to 89 meters in his strongest discipline. So looking forward to see uh, the battle between Will and Alexi. Looking forward to seeing more performances from the female athletes. It's going to be a very strong competition there. Um, who do you think uh, maybe some of the top female competitors are that have a chance at this year's podium? I know your name has been thrown out there. Um, but who, who else potentially could make a run at the women's podium here at Vertical Blue 2018? Uh, just off the top of my head, I, uh, in no specific order, um, I believe Sayuri, uh, Alenka, Alessia, um, Hanako, um, anything to add on? I think they are all really strong divers. Yeah, I think all and those Tomoka, names you mentioned. I know she's focusing on constant weight and she definitely yeah. Yeah, is, is one of the best constant weight divers. Yeah, for sure. You can see a world record attempt out of her. and. You know, I think Alessia, Tomoka, Hanako, Sayuri, and Alenka are all sort of uh, 
the contenders to make the platform here um, at this year's Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. Again, we'd like to thank all our sponsors here uh, for this year's event. Um, Origin ECN Trading Network. Uh, the principal spar uh, the principal sponsor for this year's event, the name sponsor. Uh, we also have Sunto dive gauges utilized by most of, most all of the athletes in this year's event. They make the world's most accurate dive gauge. We have uh, Paralens action cameras worn by all of our safety divers. Uh, fantastic action camera for all of your underwater spear fishing, free diving, and scuba diving needs they're rated to 200 meters in depth all the way to the bottom of dean's blue hole and then also we have the fantastic islands of the bahamas if you're looking for a great vacation and you want to do some diving the bahamas has so much on offer so much on tap so much beauty to be able to explore here in the bahamas and then also dean's blue hole uh the feature for why all of these free divers is here uh the foremost diving location on the planet and so we're going to see many world national records being broken during this year's competition. And we certainly couldn't do that without the support of our sponsors. We have Ida International, the sanctioning body of freediving events worldwide. And then we also have deeper development for all of your web-based needs, helping to bring this action live to you from the Dive Eye feed from here in the Bahamas. Our last dive of the day, Junko Kirahama from Japan, attempting free immersion 40 meters. their lungs making the descent mm -hmm. and something you may not know about Jonko is she's also a really really good judge in the sport of free diving she was judge at the uh, uh, Pan Pacific Pool Championship earlier this year that took place in Tokyo in March uh, and uh, she was also a judge last year at uh, one of the main free diving competitions it's either the World Championship or... It must be the World Championship where I met her, yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of freedivers playing multiple roles, wearing multiple hats in the sport of freediving. Some uh, competitive freedivers alternate between uh, freediving and safety. Some alternate in Junko's the capacity between freediving and uh, judging. Some are event organizers. Uh, lots of different hats worn by all of these different free divers throughout the event. So, uh, really, a community effort to make these events come to life. Uh, and uh, yeah, fantastic to see Junko here competing in the yeah, Bahamas this year. It's amazing to see her back here competing. She was competitor here two years ago, mm -hmm. and I think she focused more on her work in Japan and being a judge for the last few years. And now uh, it's great to see her back in the water. breaks the surface the nose clip and the fluid goggles come off she gives the okay signal produces the tag from her head and that looks as though we'll have a white card to cap off act three of day two here at the vertical blue free diving championships waiting for the decision from the white card and the judges presenting a white card Junko Kitahama from Japan with a beautiful dive to 40 meters and a dive time of a minute and 43 seconds. Mm. So, a lot of great dives today. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to tomorrow, day three. Should see some more big performances from these athletes. Remember, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to tune back in to the Origin ECN Free Diving Championships live from here in the Bahamas. Until then, we'll see ya. I'm Ben Zions, your host, Jesse Liu from China. Until tomorrow, aloha.
Aloha.